In 1900, human knowledge was estimated to double approximately every century. By 1945, it was said to be doubling every 25 years. By 1982, human knowledge doubled every 12 to 13 months. And by 2020, it was doubling every 12 hours. This rapid increase over the years means that there is an endless pool of knowledge. The problem now is organizing this knowledge to make it easily accessible, and that's where knowledge management comes in. But before we jump into understanding the processes of knowledge management, we first need to take a really close look at different types of knowledge. There are three types of knowledge, explicit, implicit, and tacit knowledge. We acquire knowledge in different ways and from different sources. The most common source of knowledge is formal education. This knowledge comes from educational institutions where it is passed to individuals through teaching and it is referred to as explicit knowledge. Then, after the individual acquires this explicit knowledge, at the end of their studies, they get a job in an organization where they begin to apply their knowledge. At this point, the knowledge transforms from explicit or theoretical knowledge to implicit or applied knowledge. As part of an organization, the individual begins to acquire new knowledge. This new knowledge is acquired through experience and it is called tacit knowledge or intuitive knowledge. It is not easily transferred, rather it is understood by working alongside someone who is more experienced in a field. This means that key employees are the real asset to any organization. And while it is impossible to retain all people, as some of them will retire while others will change their job, businesses can utilize knowledge management to retain the knowledge within the organization and avoid knowledge loss. Knowledge management can be represented in four major processes – acquisition, storage, distribution, and application – that altogether create new knowledge. There are also two major factors that influence these processes and their effective use of it. Those are sociocultural factors and technology. Let's look at the first stage of knowledge management, which is knowledge acquisition. Here, it's important to identify the knowledge that is needed and then where it can be acquired. This knowledge could come from external sources like customers and experts or internal sources like the employees of the organization. For example, an organization could realize that its sales are decreasing over time. This is a big problem and an external expert is invited to assess the situation, identify the cause and propose the solution. Alternatively, a company could reach out to their existing clients and ask for feedback. This could be really valuable information to understand their needs and provide better services. Of course, the most valuable source of knowledge will be found in the minds of the company employees, especially those who have been working with the company for some time. One way of acquiring this knowledge is through interviews or debrief sessions with key employees. Once acquired, the knowledge can then be stored in databases or knowledge management platforms and this takes us to the second step of knowledge management, storage and organization. At this stage, the organization has one goal in mind and that is to preserve the knowledge it has acquired. By now, most of the acquired knowledge has been converted into shareable formats which are then stored. This could be a template or form that needs to be filled in every time the new customer is onboarded. Or it could be a workflow document that needs to be followed for a specific project. The storage acts as a central repository of knowledge with an output and an input interface. The output interface allows stored knowledge to be accessed by anyone who is in need of the knowledge, such as an employee or customer while the input interface allows the organization to easily feed new knowledge into the system to improve it over time. After acquiring and storing the knowledge, the next step is to set up appropriate channels through which knowledge flows within the organization. The transfer of knowledge in and out of the system plays a central role in the third stage of knowledge management, which is the distribution of knowledge. 
Like every other stage of knowledge management process, knowledge distribution cannot be overlooked. The reason is that unlike the storage phase, knowledge distribution goes beyond just having the right technology. This is because no matter how effective the knowledge acquisition phase has been, there's bound to be knowledge gaps that occur during the conversion of tacit or implicit knowledge into explicit knowledge. The reason is that tacit and implicit knowledge is difficult to retrieve from the minds of those who possess it, and to ensure that knowledge is distributed effectively, an organization must cultivate a knowledge-sharing culture among its employees. This culture will improve the productivity of each individual, team, and the entire organization by encouraging the flow of knowledge, skill, and experience from those who have it to those who need it. Many organizations encourage competition among their employees because it is believed to stir innovation and creativity. However, such a culture could interfere with knowledge distribution because the employees believe that their knowledge makes them an asset to the organization. This becomes a disadvantage to the organization since they have to rely on few employees with the right knowledge as compared to having several employees who can get the job done. So on one hand, there is a collaborative culture where employees socialize with each other and share knowledge, thereby creating an organization with several highly skilled employees, leading to higher organizational productivity. On the other hand, there's a competitive culture where employees compete with each other and hoard relevant knowledge, resulting in very few highly skilled employees and a lower overall organizational productivity. Being that knowledge is the new currency, it is easy to see why failure to distribute knowledge costs big organizations about $31.5 billion a year. This is a massive but avoidable loss. And while it might seem to affect only big organizations, small businesses, and even individuals, could equally suffer losses when their organization is structured in a way that creates competition rather than promotes collaboration and knowledge sharing. Knowledge sharing culture will encourage and enable the free exchange of knowledge, insight, and experience to benefit individuals and the organization as a whole. With the right culture and technology in place, knowledge can then be effectively applied to improve the overall organizational productivity. When people have access to the right information at the right time, then work becomes easier as it means less stress and more positive experience. This in turn motivates people to do a better job and this is where new knowledge is created. Let's say I'm a motivated salesperson and I follow a proven process to get new clients. During one of my calls, I find out some important information about the industry when a customer shares his existing pain point. This piece of information is knowledge that can be captured, stored, distributed and applied by other employees within the organization if the company has developed the right culture and has the right technology in place. This is how knowledge management works. This video was created in collaboration with Document360, one of the leading knowledge-based platforms. The Document360 team provided me with valuable information and I spoke with some of the team members to get a better picture of how knowledge management is practically applied. Their experience stretches for over a decade and by continuously improving and evolving, they've been able to establish themselves as one of the leading knowledge-based platforms in the world. So, if you are considering knowledge management for your project, then you should definitely check them out. While some businesses are only active to the point their client makes a purchase, Document360 team will be there to onboard, guide you, and support you along the way. One of their core values is teamwork, and I could really feel the collaborative spirit and warmness while working with them. So, I would like to say a massive thank you to Document360 team for supporting me in creating this video. I will leave the link to the website in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in another episode.